back to another episode of Smashing That Bass. Got something a little new for you guys. As you know, I purchased a kayak, if you've been watching for any time, about middle of the summer, and I fell in love with the kayak fishing. Right behind me is a Lifetime Charger kayak, 200 bucks from Walmart. So I've decided to upgrade for next year to a stand-up kayak. We went over the, the Three Waters Big Fish 105 kayak. That's what's coming up to you now. Stay tuned. I think you'll enjoy. Yeah, they're just like you're sitting in your living room. Okay. And then swinging around. It's a lot easier to get in that way. That's one of the advantages to having the sit on top is it's easier to get in. And then for your lumbar support, and then if you were looking for a little bit more support, you can adjust it by pulling on these two straps. Okay. So now we're much more comfortable here. Um, the boat has a floor and a subfloor. So this floor allows water to go down in here and drain through the cupper holes that are underneath here. That allows you to not have to worry about using scupper plugs in the event of uh, dropping lures or weights or anything down in there and going down and sucking, sleuthing them in the water. Um, Start in the back of the boat, you've got a rotor molded built in handle. This boat is rudder ready, so they show they have the tubes already built into the boat for applying the rudder, and the rudder drive would go down through here. In the event that you were to get water in your hull, you have a drain plug. Bungees for storage, a big wide open crank crate well with attachment points a lot of boats don't give you those attachment points you got three attachment points so you can put your your bait crate in there and attach it solidly right then you have your rod holders with your rod safety leashes built in the seat adjusts to actually three positions and a stand-up position so if you wanted to Rig it as a lean bar, stuff like this, you could. Right. It's something to lean against in the back. The reason the boat is wiggly while it's on the concrete area, it has a it has a crown that we're riding on. So it's not sitting flat. Yeah, I think there's, there's your other position where you have the lower back and the raised front. And you have all the way down. Stand up assist leash. You saw the foot, foot pegs, and you have a storage compartment here, which is actually a sonar pod unit. If you squeeze it tightly and pull off, that whole unit comes out. Your transducer can set right in here, and it would be above the bottom of the boat. Right. Which is very good for if you're in rocky areas or run in or even just beach in the boat coming in for the landing at the end of the day okay so pretty much what i'm looking for like i said i have a sit-in kayak um, i also own a river boat so i'm trying to keep my river boat but what i like about the sit-in kayak is that it's i understand that it's going to be lighter because it's a sit-in mm -hmm. and it's only 47 pounds so it's easy for me to carry so pretty much what I'm looking for is to upgrade from that, but to also have something light enough um, that I can still carry. Right. And, and, and have the advantage of, you know, being able to like sight fish, you know, rather it be structure or lily pads or um, just just whatever kind of structure for bass, just get that extra advantage as far as being able to, to stand up and see and, you know, get a better hook set and all that kind of stuff rather than sitting down. Right. So my goal is to keep it as light as i can but to also have something stable enough obviously that i can stand on right now i know we spoke earlier um i mispronounced the name it's actually pelican oh. the pelican catch uh 100 uh theirs is more like a standard kayak to my understanding i think the uh, Big Fish 105, it has like a tri hull or cathedral, is what right. they call it. I was, was going to show you the, the hull, that's the important part. 
Let me slide in front of you here. When you look at a lot of boats that are in the industry, um, I think Feel Free has the most stable hull. Um, these grooves that are lineal act as secondary stability. Um. So when you're rocking in a boat, like do -do 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 -do, and you don't have anything but you're just rounded here, that's when that kayak's going to flip because it's got okay. nothing in the water. With these, they act as a secondary stability. It's like trying to push a two by four through the water. Right. You can imagine how hard that would be. Yes. And that's your secondary stability that's built into these boats. Okay. So when you're buying a kayak, you want to look not only at the, the creature comforts and the seating of the cockpit, but you want to look at the hull of the boat. Okay. And there's different hulls for different reasons. The big fish and the lures have that very similar hull. But we go to the Moken, for example, and this hull is going to have smaller channels in here. Okay. So this is going to be a lighter, faster boat, but it's going to give up stability. Gotcha. There you can't have you can't have both. The law of physics does not allow that to happen. Understand. The more surface area you have on the boat, touching the water, the greater the coefficient is of friction. The greater the coefficient of friction gives you stability. However, it slows the boat down. Right. So you can't you can never have both in a kayak. And what kayak manufacturers strive to do is find a happy medium. And that's why feel free and free waters make so many different calls so that we can try to get you in the right boat. Right. Now what I would do if I was purchasing a kayak, just like purchasing a car, I would never buy a kayak without riding in it if I wasn't sure. Now if I had a buddy and we went out on a fishing trip over the weekend and I rode in his boat and man, I love it. I'm gonna go buy one. Right. You've already tried to test drive it. But what I would suggest, Ryan, that we do is in the spring, when you're ready, come back, take the big fish, take the mokin. Even though it's a longer boat, it's a lighter boat. Right. You can still stand up in the Moken, and it's faster and more maneuverable and lighter, because that's one of the things that you mentioned. Now, is the standability as good as the big fish? I would say no. Right. You still could do it. You can stand up, you can make a couple casts, and then back down. The feel, the big fish, you can stand up and use it like a paddle board. You can paddle board this boat all day long and never sit down in this boat. That's how stable it is. Right. So, you know, you have to find that happy medium that you're happy with. Might be different from me, might be different from Phil, might be different from these guys. Everybody could be different. That's why there's so many different boats out there. The other reason this is so much heavier than a Pelican is if you look at a Pelican and you hold it up to the light, you can see through it. Yeah, I figured the, the, the plastic probably wasn't as it's, durable. It's less thick. This yeah. is almost three eighths of an inch thick. Oh, okay. It's like that thick. So we've been selling kayaks for a long time here, like Fly Outfitters, and we have never had a hull breakage due to hitting a rock or being on the water. Right. The Pelican boat is, a, is a, what they call a clamshell boat. Mm -hmm. They make a bottom, they make a top, and they basically weld it together where this boat is spun one piece in a mold. The Lure 10 is, is really kind of our, the most popular boat for this area. It's yep. a little bit lighter than this boat, and it has a wheel built into the back, so you can roll it around easy. Right. Here, you know, you kind of, you're, you're stuck. I'm gonna be doing bass fishing out of it, so, you know, mainly. So, um, 
I was wanting something I could possibly stick a troll motor like up front. Like I know some people are sticking them through here. Yeah. Um, I was kind of wanting one kind of like I have on my bass boat, and I'm sure I could modify something, uh -huh. but where I could stick one like a like a like a bow mount troll motor up front where I pull, you know you pull it back up one and it locks in place. Um, and I also you know wanted to be able to paddle it, so I know some people were saying that this is um, a little tougher to paddle in some of the other boats it is because of that coefficient of friction the more surface area you have the, the harder it is to paddle but the more stable it is so that's that's why i think you want to be best to get you in a boat yeah and let you paddle them around yeah i'm all about like i said i there's whatever i get will definitely be put a trolling motor will be put on it now there is a there is a company that's making a uh a bracket that fits a trolling motor back here. Okay. Uh, and I understand why why you want a trolling motor up front. I had a bass boat. I had like eight bass boats. And there's a difference between pulling and pushing. All right. Pushing is good if you're just going from point A to point B. But if we're, if you're maneuvering around stumps and everything, that's really not going to help you. Right. You need to have it up front. Yep. So, um, and that's where the coming through the sonar pod comes in. It kind of is the best of best of both worlds. Um, the challenge with that is then you lose your your sonar pod, and uh, you know I don't think you can you can kick it off, but it's not like your scissors mount trolling motor, which is all the way up out of the water, mounted on the top of the deck. There's always going to be some there, so it makes for launching and recovery another added step to remove something before you can drag the boat up on the shore. Right. So those are all things to consider. Yeah. Um, I am more of a, in, in the area that we're in, with the Shenandoah and the Potomac rivers being shallow, rocky rivers, um, and the majority of our boats are going to be sold on and used on those rivers. Most of our, most of our clients are very minimalistic. They want, they're like you, they, they've got a bass boat or a jet boat where they can go out in the spring, but once it gets summer level, and summer level seems to be coming earlier and earlier every year, where the second week of June, you can't hardly take your jet boat out anymore. You know, right. So you want to be able to fish all summer, so you need a kayak. So most of our clients are minimalistic. Uh, just a tackle bag, you know, selection of lures, two or three rods, not even their full armament of rods that they would normally keep on a bass boat. Right. Yes, correct. I mean, I, I, like I said, I just want to, be able to put a troll motor on it because I, I have found a lot of new reservoirs I haven't been to yet. And a lot of them are not going to allow a gas motor, so that's why I want the trolling motor. Yeah. Um, now, I will be taking it, you know, in creeks and things, you know, of that nature. Um, but I, I probably mainly will be going to reservoirs with it. That's why I'm thinking the trolling motor. And then, you know, like Minn Kota even makes a trolling motor plate where it's removable. You know, it's just like a latch or something like that, and you can take it right off. And yeah, it's, a, it's in a keyway. Right, yep. You pull the plate onto the boat, and then you have a keyway. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, you know, I feel like you did a pretty good job here. I really appreciate it. All right, man. Um, I'll definitely be coming back in the spring to uh, test these. Like I said, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's something I would like to do before I buy it. As we spoke about in the video, I will be going back next spring to test out a few kayaks, plus the one that we had talked about, the Three Waters Big Fish 105. I'm pretty sure I'll be picking that, but we won't know till next spring for sure. So I will be taking you guys along on that one as well, so stay tuned.